let's look at the edit method now. We're going to change the item ID to product ID, change item to product. So we find the item with the proper product ID and view the item, which we can call the product. using the product edit view, which we will build in a few short moments. Modify the name, the description and the price. Okay and call the update method. Go back to product index for the redirection. So now let's make a new view. Save it as edit.php. Again, basing myself on the view to edit items. I will edit a product. I'll edit the product. And I still need to have a few more form groups. So namely the form group for the description. And this description should be the same text area as we previously had. So what I will do is go get the code for the text area in my create view. Yes, being lazy. So my text area has a name description form control again and I'll just close the text area so this is for description and now price price uh, let's not forget the data that's being displayed we have the data for the name field now we need the description field here in the description text area and the price value the price field from the database in the form control for the price we can save changes and go back to the product index otherwise okay this is good Now for delete, again, let's take the product ID. And change the model to product. I like to change the variable name to the product. There's nothing to do with the values inside but certainly redirect to product and display product delete as well so all I have to do is find the product and display it with the details to see if we wish to delete and then otherwise delete I'm gonna take a note here deletion should not happen when there are sales recorded and we will handle that at a later time so as previously we will create a new view 
save it as product, uh, save it as delete.php. And looking at my delete view from previously, I noticed that I have uh, form groups again. I could use a detailed view and have a separate form, which I will implement here as an example. So I will paste this in here and allow the user to delete this product. The form is not going to display any data this time around, but I will have a submit button to delete and the cancel should lead to product index. Instead, I will display the details of the product from the definition list. Which was built in the edit view. Okay. Good. We have our products. We're still filtering based on the login filter. To modify the way the application is flowing right now, we're going to try to go to the product catalog first and see if we are able to change the data inside, view the data inside, and modify everything as we did previously with the item model. We have our login controller and we used to go to the home index when we perform the login properly. Now let's go instead to the product index. Nothing else seems to be needed. Let's test the application. So we have a, an error to correct in our model on line 18. Let's give it a look. There we go. Price points to this price. And for some reason, the highlighting is bizarre here. I'll trust that it works. And the same error occurs on line 33. Okay, we have a product catalog. Let's add an item, the name 2% milk. Wholesome 2% milk. Price four liters, 658. Create. We have a few issues here because the way we modified our view, we forgot to change the item ID to product ID. So let's make that change in the index view. And we see item ID everywhere. Let's make the change.
to product ID. It seems to display correctly except for the price which was input with a comma let's try editing this price oops one of my hyperlinks was incorrect in the create view product index let's edit this 6.58 save changes the price still sucks so to see what's going on here what we need to do is add to the create method something which will display the contents of post and stop the redirection so var dump post and stop the redirection let's try to create a new item chocolate chip cookies the description yummy and uh, for 99 create and now we get this error message there's something definitely strange going on because my product model seemed correct but it states that on line 18 there's an issue so let's go look at line 18 of the product model So on line 18, we see that we have this price, which is oddly colored. And everything looks like it's okay, but when I move my mouse around this location, or my cursor rather, it doesn't work. So I'll try and delete this character. And I see that, oh, there were some hidden characters causing issues. So if you see the color coding wrong somewhere, Maybe try to change what's written there. So this is the kind of mistake or syntax error that was hard to detect. So let's try this again. Okay. Now I still have an undefined property price on line 18. So let's take a look. On line 19 rather. Price which is undefined for some reason. Ah, all better. So many wrong characters causing many problems. Let's see if the change makes sense. Yes, the price is correct. So these little debugging sessions, I think are very useful to students when they see the problems happening live and see the solutions. So let's try and delete a few items after we've changed the way the product controller works back to normal. Maybe I could just, instead of deleting, maybe I could edit six, 58, 
Save the changes. Chocolate chip cookies. It's another brand. Let's try with the comma to see what happens. So if I use a comma, it's not the proper separator for this uh, statement. So we'll propose a fix at a later time. So let's just say 399 with the period sign. Save changes. There we go. Okay. So we have pretty much all the operations we want for the product catalog. So for our next video, we will use the item model as a wish list for the product catalog, which we will show the users. So this will be a completely different display, which will not be the administrative display for the products. So I hope you enjoyed this video and have a good day.